So today you're going to see the steps that we need to follow to deliver a 2D seismic refraction tomography survey. So the red sensor is called a geophone and the geophone uh, picks up the seismic waves. The seismic waves, <coughs> the signal of the seismic waves gets uh, digitized by this um, remote unit or also called digitizer. <coughs> Once the signal is digitized, it is uh, sent through this cable to the uh, data collector. So it can be visualized by the uh, entire software. Geophones are connected to the uh, remote units. And the remote units are actual uh, digitizers of the uh, seismic signal. The seismic signal goes uh, through the cable and it reaches the data collector where it is later seen by the uh, software. The orange spot is where the, look, the, uh, <clears throat> the plate has to be placed, so the uh, impact is uh, done at every single uh, mark. The spacing of the, uh, of the plate or the impact is uh, very important. The more impacts you have and, and the closely spaced they are, the, more, uh, the higher the resolution can be in the case for uh, seismic refraction tomography. So the spacing can vary from 1 meter to 3 meters, 5 meters, 6 meters, or 10 meters, depending on the uh, desired resolution. So this is the first location of the uh, seismic, uh, <clears throat> of the impact, and we're going to place this uh, metallic plate on top of that uh, uh, mark, and this is going to be the first uh, impact for this seismic refraction tomography survey. And we're going to do a number of impacts uh, and we're going to work our way towards the uh, seismograph. So it's going to be about five uh, impacts that we're going to do. And to do that, we need this uh, hammer, sledgehammer. And the sledgehammer is actually connected to the, <coughs> the cable line. Okay, The uh, cable line snaps onto this uh, seismic trigger. The seismic trigger just simply snaps to the cable line and at that point I wait a few seconds before <clears throat> I can actually hit the plate and once it's ready I can I can do that and I can do uh, a number of stacking it can be three, five, ten or so. So these five impacts actually become the seismic source. <clears throat> these seismic waves or seismic energy uh, is picked up by all the sensors and eventually we can see the seismic record in the computer. So we're done hammering the five different locations and what's next is <clears throat> to produce a 2D image of the uh, seismic velocity structure for these uh, profile seismic profile so what we do next is pretty much uh, we look at the data and we process the data and give you a, 
um, seismic velocity structure image of the uh, subsurface where you can actually see the uh, depth to bedrock or the thickness of the sediments, the uh, uh, geometry and underground topography of the uh, subsurface uh, conditions. Uh, in some cases you might be able to see faulting if present, you might be able to see weather zones, um, you might be able to see the uh, uh, f uh, fracture zones within the subsurface. So for seismic, uh, ve seismic velocity studies, uh, seismic refraction tomography works great for vertical uh, with vertical geophones or with horizontal geophones if you want to get um, shear wave velocity structure. Uh, other things we can do with this equipment are MASW studies and uh, REMI studies and even reflection studies.